help recover this old 1998 Camry after it was stolen by a, a drug addict and used and abused for almost a month. But we got it back, we cleaned it up, got it, uh, all the odors out of it. It actually turned out pretty nice. Like I said, it's nothing fancy. But I've uh, decided to try to make it a little more difficult the next time they steal it. And they will probably try, I'm sure. Um, this car is going to be driven in Portland. And Portland's got a pretty high rate of, of car thefts right now, unfortunately. Not not a good time to be in Portland driving around, especially in the 98 Camry. Hondas and Camrys are real, real popular for them. Must be easy to steal. So uh, I wanted to, to show you a little kill switch, which is this little wire setup here that I made up. I'll install this in the car. Um, hopefully it'll deter them a little bit, make it a little harder, a little longer to to get it started in order to take it. And um, I'll go ahead and show you what I did with this and how it works. It's pretty simple, very simple in fact. There are a lot of videos online as far as making kill switches. A lot of them involve tapping into the fuel system, uh, tapping the, to the battery or connecting something to the battery, connecting something to either the starter or the ignition. And I decided to go with the ignition. And I decided to go with the fuse box inside the car. You could go into this panel here. On this car, it's got an outside one under the hood. You could get into this one, but you've got to route the wire through the firewall and get it inside where you'd have a, a switch hidden. So I decided just to go in, inside the car with the interior fuse box, make it a little easier. But um, what I bought is this little electrical connection. They call it a... A fuse socket connector. It's nothing more than a plug. It, it, it is not a fuse. It's just a plug. It plugs into uh, whatever type of fuse you may have. Um, I've got minis, but the kit you had that I bought had a mini, um, the standard one, which is called an ATC, and then the, the maxi one, which are the real big ones. And then they make them for the micro mini too, but since I didn't have one of those, I decided not to get that kit. But this kit was about $13 for these. You get three of them. And so mine has the mini, so that's what I used. And it's nothing more than just a plug. It's got two quarter-inch spade uh, connectors on the back side of it, just like these. And I connected a couple wires to it. I had this wire already with these connectors on it. But it's nothing more than just uh, installing some female quarter-inch spade connectors to uh, um, at least a 16-gauge wire. And then you plug it into this tab here. And, and that takes care of that end. Um, you want to put an inline fuse in it, which is what this is. And I'll go ahead and pull this wire loom off so we can get a better, better view of what we got going here. It's this connector is nothing more than a plug, like I said. It's got the quarter inch male spade connector. You just get a female connector and plug it in. I got one side of it painted red. That just tells me which prong is going to go to the hot lead, and I'll show you in the fuse um, box how I determine that. And it's also connected to the wire with the black on it, so it'll run all the way to the the inline fuse, and that same black wire is going to be tapped into this inline fuse. So I, I have a fuse in the line. You don't want to do it without a fuse. Otherwise, you'll fry your wires all the way through to the battery. So I've got uh, the same size fuse as what I'm pulling out. And then I've, again, I just uh, soldered my two wires and used shrink tape around them to my switch. And there is my switch on off on off and that'll be hidden somewhere in the car so we can throw that switch when we're not driving it and hopefully slow the guys down that want to try stealing the car and that's basically what makes up the the switch a wire make sure you've tapped into the side you're going to determine the hot side and mark it with the black line on it continue it to your fuse make sure that same wire is connected to this fuse. And then solder and shrink tape the 
toggle switch, and I'm just using a, a two-pin toggle switch. Um, middle spade connector, where this black wire is going to be the one I'm connecting the power coming in, and this output, which is the red, which you would think would be opposite, but it isn't. And it's soldered and shrink taped to this side of the wire, and that continues its way back to this side of the fuse. So um, let me show you how I determined which side of the fuse was hot, and we'll go from there. So I went to the owner's manual first, and I just went through the, the fuses that show where the fuses are, what the fuses are, and what they do. And I found a couple of them, like this one here. Ignition, it's a 5 amp fuse, or I could have gone with number 32, which is the starter 5 amp fuse. And these are on the interior fuse box. And they show you the locations here. So I'm going to go with number 26, which is the ignition. And it's the second one down on the second row. So we'll go in and check that out. There's my interior fuse box. And you can see the second row over, second down is a 5 amp fuse. Probably can't read it real well, but that's, that's the ignition fuse. That's the one I'm going to pull out and tap into. So just to show that the car does start, I'll go ahead and fire it up real quick. So it starts, and I'm going to pull that fuse. And I've got to find out which side of that fuse is hot. So I'll set you up and hopefully you can see this. If I use the right key. So this was the location where that number 26 fuse is. Touch that side of the fuse. I got nothing. I touch this side of the fuse. And that's my hot side of that fuse. So that's the side I'm going to put the red side of my uh, socket connector into. You can see that. So the red side of that. is going to be on the hot side of that fuse. And so this switch right now, it's set to the run position. So I'll go ahead and start the car, make sure it's running. And it's running. I'll go ahead and just throw the switch off. And it won't start. And I'll throw the switch back on. And it starts. Pretty simple way, I thought. Uh, not 100% sure it's all safe, but I did run it by uh, a wiring guy that I had some work done on the radio, and he said it looked good to him, so he knows more about it than I do. So I'm feeling good about doing it. I'll go ahead and hide that somewhere where hopefully it makes it hard for someone to locate it. But uh, it's at least something. Hopefully make it a little harder for them next time to steal the thing and make me feel at least a little better about trying to do something to prevent it. So thanks for watching. If you have any comments, leave them. If you like it, go ahead and um, let your buddies know about it. But it's a, it's a pretty simple, quick, clean way to do a kill switch. Thanks for watching.